Okay, so problem two is just like problem one, so I'm skipping that video. Um, question three in chapter 10. Um, this one here is a Z-test. Okay, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, so some manufacturers claim that non-hybrid sedan cars have lower mean miles per gallon than hybrid ones. Suppose computers test 21 hybrid sedans to get a mean of 32 miles per gallon, a standard deviation of 7 miles per gallon. 31 non-hybrid sedans get a mean of 20 miles per gallon, a standard deviation of 4 miles per gallon. Now suppose that the population standard deviations are known to be 6 and 3 respectively. So we're using a z-test because of the fact they tell us the population standard deviations. And respectively means that 6 matches up with the first one and 3 matches up with the second one. So 6 is the standard deviation for hybrids and 3 is the uh, standard deviation for non-hybrids. Conduct a hypothesis test of 5% to evaluate the manufacturer's claim. Okay, so they say here that non-sedan hybrid cars have a lower mean mile per gallon than hybrids. Again, this is the alternative hypothesis. Okay, it doesn't say equal to anywhere in there, it just says lower than. So we have to go to B, which is what is the alternative hypothesis, that non-hybrids are lower than hybrids. Again, notice they turn the um, alternate they turn the equate the sentence around from what the question asked okay but non hybrids are lower than hybrids so that's why this is the answer and remember the the null has to then be everything else so if this is greater than the null has to be less than or equal to okay so just be aware that sometimes they well the question may give you um, the alternative and then the uh, hypothesis may be in the different order. So this had non-hybrids going first and hybrids going second, but in the hypothesis equations, they had hybrid going first and non-hybrids going second. Okay, what does it mean to subtract the two of them? Well, it just means that we're looking to see is there a difference between the two means. Now, what is the um, distribution going to be? This is normally distributed, it's a z-test, so we're going to use n. Our mean is always zero because we're looking to see is there a difference between these two things. So if we subtract two things and they're equal, the mean would be zero. The standard deviation is a little complicated. Okay, we have to calculate this. And it is the square root of our standard deviation squared, 6 squared, divided by our sample size, which is um, 21 hybrids plus the standard deviation of the other one squared 3 squared divided by the sample size of the second one so 31 and they want us to round to two decimal places so 1.415 rounds to two so remember you have to square the standard deviations and divide by the sample sizes, add them together, and then take the square root of everything. Okay? So if I had a writing instrument, it would be um, sigma squared over n1 plus sigma squared 2 over n2, and then take the square root of everything, which is what I did. What is the test statistic? Well, we're going to go to find that out. So we're going to go to stat, tests, and this is a two sample z test. We have statistics. Okay. This one asks for the standard deviations first. So six and three. Okay, what is the mean of the first one? The mean of the first one is 32. What is the sample size? 21. What is the mean of the second one? 
20. What is the sample size? 31. What is the alternative hypothesis? Greater than. So we go over to greater than, hit enter, and select it. And then we hit calculate. And it gives us our test statistic right here. Z is 8.475. They went two decimal places, so that's how they get the 8.48. And this is a Z test because it's we're dealing with a normal distribution. What is the p-value? Our p-value here, notice it says 0, 0, 0, 0 here. Well, when I look at my p-value, I get 1.18. Now, those aren't the same. Why is that? Well, p-values have to be between 0 and 1. Okay, and obviously 1.18 is bigger than 1. Notice that anytime you have something bigger than 1, it's going to have this E here, which just means times 10. And it's, in this case, it's times 10 to the negative 17th power. So I have to move this decimal point 17 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I'm like way over here. And all of those places in there are zeros. So I have a 0 0.16 zeros and then a 1. So the first four decimal places are 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, and now they're asking, what does that mean? It means that if the null hypothesis is true, that hybrids are less than or equal to non-hybrids, then the probability of getting a difference of 12, okay, is zero. All right, the probability of getting a difference of 12 is equal to this if the null hypothesis is true. Sketch a picture of the graph. Well, because we are dealing with greater than, we have to look for the greater than one. Well, this is less than, this is not equal to, this has the complete opposite of not equal to. This is the only one that has the p-value on the greater than side. So that's why that's the answer for that one. What is alpha? Alpha is 0.05. Right here, the 5% level of significance. What are we going to do? Well, 0 0.0000 is less than 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis because p-value is less than alpha. So again, these are backwards, but p-value is less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis. And then what does that mean? Well, there is significant evidence to show, because we're rejecting, we have significant evidence to show that the alternative hypothesis is probably true. Hybrids do get higher gas mileage than non-hybrids. And then why did we choose the one we chose? We chose a normal distribution because we know both population standard deviations.